Okay, we back, man. Authentic TV. Hey, I told y'all we don't do nothing but legendary shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I got a motherfucking big dog in the build today, man. Y'all gonna learn some motherfucking history today, man, about the build. You know what I'm saying? Look, this man worldwide with this shit, man. Shoreline Mafia, killing the shit, West Coast, East Coast, down south. It don't matter, man. It's the man you need to go see with this shit, man. Look. I'm gonna introduce my man today, man. TK Barry in this bitch, man. What's good with it? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, my boy. Yes, sir. Let it be back home. Yeah. yeah. Back in the city. Back in the city. Yeah, so shit. What's good with it? Man, you know, out here, man, uh, linking up with my family off top okay. first. Okay. And then the second thing, uh, fucking with Tay Keith and okay. Nick and all my boys. Shout out to all their success right now they having. Uh, right. Fucking with my boy Troy, who a part of the family. Dope shit only. Dope shit only. Yeah. Uh, my brother Doc. And, Doc. Um, yeah. Shit, I'm trying to see what else going on in the city right now. Of course, Shannon Sanders. Yeah. Uh, just fucking with the home team. Regular shit. Yeah. Regular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you see, you've been doing a whole lot of shit in this game for a minute, though. You know what I'm saying? Long time, man. Long time. You know, this the this the starting block. You know, I, okay. I know for a fact. Uh, is there any artists from Nashville been on No Jumper? Yeah? Who been on there? I don't think so yet. Okay. So, so I'm gonna... Maybe have... Buck or something, I ain't sure. Buck been on there? Nope. I don't mm -hmm. think he been on there. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, I um, just featured on my new album. I got Ed Dolo. He's out in QC. He from Arkansas. Uh, now he been on there. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. I've been trying to get his shit. He live here, though? Nah, he actually uh, Arkansas from Helena. Uh, okay. Bankroll Freddy. Uh, What's his name? Guy, Ed Dolo. Where he live at now? He, he's still in Arkansas with it. Okay, we uh, we deal with a, a artist out there, uh, this bankroll people too. He just got out the Fed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For mm -hmm. sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. We hey, we pushing the line, man. You know, we've been doing this authentic shit for a second, just trying to get a, the city a platform. You know, for artists to, you know, just have an outlet to push their line. You know what I'm saying? Because it's kind of been stagnant for a while, and you know, a lot of people don't want to take that mix. That role to to push the line for the city. So what you like? We just gonna keep all this shit uncut. For sure. Uh, I know you've been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. Before we got up in here, I've been seeing this man face. Yo. This is how how work and how how everything works. Yo. I was with my brother yesterday in the projects, and okay. we looking at shit. Um, we looking at videos. He like he wanted me to see this uh, fresh video. He been sending me this cool daddy fresh. Shout out to fresh and. Okay. Uh, uh, all my niggas from back in the day, K and S. Mm -hmm. uh, New Life Records, baby. Come on, man. New <laughs> Life. Yeah. Uh, Lee Lane. Lee. Uh, uh, yeah. Man, you know the whole. We gonna go. We can go into all that. But um, yeah. he told me watching, and I saw you. Okay. As one of the new things that uh, Fresh was doing. Okay. And yeah. then I know you, as we were saying through um, through since the we had Demarco, my cousin Di. Yes, sir. Just, you know uh, D Goods who plugged me. Shout out to my boy D Goods, my Good. little brother right there, who plugged me mm -hmm. with Troy okay. years ago. Okay. We shot that, that new fresh video, my man JP. Shot that joint, edited that, that new fresh joint. You know what I'm saying? That's hard. That's yeah. hard. They want to give me back. back that new joint. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I seen that with the leather jacket and all yeah, that. Yeah, with the leather jacket. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So I, seen, I seen your work before I even seen you. That, that, that yeah. show you you doing what you're supposed to do. For sure. So it's, it's wild that you say that also with my nephews. And my brothers, we've been having a conversation okay. um, in regard to Nashville classics. Okay. Because I'm just not a negative person. I'm not a motherfucker that's going <laughs> to sit here and talk to you about what's not working. Right, like, right. I right. don't give a fuck. We all know how that shit go. Mm -hmm. uh, we got it. It's a salute. When you talk about business, and the, the thing, the superpower that I have, we can just start it with this. So the Nash, let's talk about the Nashville mentality. Right. Yeah. So we can talk about Memphis as the home to the, the black music that the whole world knows in yeah. regard to the culture of rap. Okay. Everybody know Memphis. Uh, shout out to uh, DJ Paul. That's my Paul. Boy. Paul is one of my good people. Uh, we had our birthday together out here, I think, what, four or five years ago? Had a birthday uh, celebration downtown with Paul. Uh, and we just, I mean, he done linked me up and all type of shit in LA. I had him doing shit. He usually do a couple of uh, tracks where they come out or not for artists that we had at like any kind of classic Southern shit we put them on. Okay. And um, in this conversation, we talk about the mindset of somebody in Nashville. Okay. Which is an indifference, right? Because we don't yep. got shit. So you're going to go to 
when you go to the shit that I take here is like if you talk to niggas in Memphis, okay. they might hit you with the straight. I'm finna get high. I'm to my. I'm finna smoke a whole bunch of whatever it is. Some right. fentanyl. That's why. What's the white boy they like? The white GD. White folks. White. That's a old okay. yeah. white. That's a Memphis nigga. Right. He's just a white nigga. He way he fucked up. He dopey. Uh, <laughs> nigga, somebody he'll rob you, kill you, say you dope, all that, right? Okay. okay. So okay. Nashville, right? Okay. We we have an indifference. I came up in the drug era, so right. everybody out here was getting money. So. The indifference is, I don't give a fuck, nigga. I got money, too. Right. So that was something, when we talked, and we didn't get to talk, but we were talking about the three classic okay. Nashville albums. All of them albums had, the indifference was because of the teams behind them albums. Okay. There was some niggas with money from Nashville that was pushing them albums, mm. and they had, you didn't have, the artists really didn't have no choice. You right. had to put the mentality of the people that was putting the money in the records, okay. which is that indifference. Okay. So we wasn't dick riders. We wasn't, it wasn't about what Detroit was doing at that time. We nah, might have yeah, yeah. liked Top Authority and Yeah, yeah. Shout out to them. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, we we might have liked Spice One. Come on. We might have liked the C-Bow. ghetto boy c You know what I'm saying? Man. We liked all of them, right? But we mm-hmm. wasn't trying to be them. We right. had our own indifferences. And when you look at the, the artists that made it here before Buck, okay. they were prime examples of that. And my, my indifference to shit is my industry secret weapon. Okay. And I want anybody that's from Nashville to use that indifference. So if people don't like your music, who give a fuck? Use that same shit. It's very few rappers I've seen from here that bring that truth. Yeah, my boy, I got my own money, nigga. I don't give a fuck what y'all <laughs> niggas doing. For sure. That's why you don't see me in the industry like that. Okay. I really learned that here. Mm. I, I really used to be a teenager writing rhymes with, uh, with rugged. That's a fact. Okay. I really created a group as a teenager, right? With with rugged as the biggest dope dealer rugged in the called organized, organized crime. crime. I Come did on. that, nigga. They'll tell you that. Come on. I was the nigga that did that. Mm. Right? As the teenager that really had a group called Technique. I did that. Okay. I really went to Atlanta and wrote rhymes with uh Atlanta niggas, uh DJ Wynn and all them niggas in SWATs. Okay. Nigga from Nashville. I really shout out Rico who just who just Rico passed. Wade. Shout out Rico. Shout out my nigga man. CeeLo. Yeah. They tell you. They uh, shout out to my sister from around these areas. Okay. Uh, 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 Joy Gillum, who daddy was the first black quarterback. Pittsburgh. Joe Gillum. Jefferson okay. Street Joe. Okay. We all went to school together, and she put me in a connect with Dallas Austin, and by by dealing with Dallas and different people, that put me to the top. Of the Atlanta food chain. Ooh. Everything else I had to do on my own, but shout out to my homegirl, you know? That's real history and, right and, there. And them things that I'm telling you is because it was niggas like Hicks. Okay. Because if Hicks. you from out north, you yeah. don't know about Hicks. Yeah, we know about you Hicks, know I mean? baby. Solid niggas. Shout Come out on. to my nigga Hicks. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and you know, uh, to some of the niggas that I grew up with out south, this legends, you know? And right. um, it was that mentality, because when I was rapping, Niggas didn't like rap. They mm. didn't like. This is how we was indifferent. Nashville people like rap to listen to. Right. They had no aspirations <laughs> in the eighties and nineties. Niggas was they was selling readies. No, nah, for sure. For sure. They was selling readies. Wasn't no fentanyl. Niggas uh-uh. was selling readies. Yeah, yeah. They was cooking dope. Mm. And that whole mentality was to get some work. That was the mentality. You was a lame if you had a job. You was a lame if you did this. Yeah. Nobody was fucking with you. I fell in love with hip-hop. I okay. felt unadulterated hip-hop. Mm. As a young nigga, right? Mm. Young nigga, teenage nigga. Yeah. Actually, I fell in love with rap as a little kid. My mama went to, it was a wig spot on Jefferson Street where right now the um, farmer's market is. It used to be the old farmer's market. And okay. they had a wig spot in there that sold vinyl. And my mama mm. went in there and bought a, a test pressing of mm. a record uh in New York, and this is about seven, eight months before Sugar Hill came out. Ooh. Yeah. And they see people don't know because of Lee Lane. Yeah. You know, Lee was what they call a one stop. Oh yeah. And a one stop was basically a record store that did so much business yeah. that they allowed them to have distribution rights. They allowed okay. them to be able to be an influencer to other record stores in their regions mm. for buying habits. Lee would order shit for the whole 
Middle Tennessee that other stores would then buy. They would see what New Life was getting. Oh, and yeah. them stores would then buy after them. And then when chain record stores started coming in, mm. they started digging on what Lee Lane was doing. And that was like what, Selecto Hits? That Selecto hit. I, look, Southwest. He taught me about this and then I put it in the 10th grade. Mm. He taught me about Selecto Hits, Swartz Brothers, mm. and uh, what's the one? Swartz Brothers did... Southwest. Uh, Southwest, yeah. was, Southwest was out there. Uh, and that's why I learned about Southwest through DeMarco. Okay. DeMarco okay. is who told me about Paul Wall and Chameleon when they were Damn. teenagers in Houston. Shit. I got to L.A., me and my cousin, Theop, shout out to DeMarco. Shout and we're going to leave it at that. Okay. We He got us out there on a bootleg credit card back in the day. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we... Uh, Lee Lane was the one stop. He told me about Swartz Brothers, Selecto Hits, mm. and it was one in the Mid-Atlantic. And he told me that these one stops are distribution hubs where people are able to do that. And Lee did that for all. If you from Dixon, Gallatin, Columbia, if you had another record store during the 80s and 90s, Lee Lane is where they decided to get those records from. That's who mm. had Run DMC. That's who had LL, he, Def Jam. All your things that was become the... The cornerstone in hip hop is because of Lee Lane. Mm. The fresh fresh coming down here is because he was selling those records. He was the person that created the man for them to come into this market. It was mm. profitable for them to come into this market because okay. of Lee Lane selling them records. That's just a fact. Yeah. So um that all that has that indifference, and once again I just want to say that indifference, you hear it on Classic Pistol, you hear it on uh you hear it on uh, Cool Daddy Fresh. You hear yeah. it on Quanty Cash. You know, uh, one of my favorite records from Nashville. I remember I came back in 99. Okay. We did a deal uh, for a group called the SEC with Loud Records. SEC. Yeah. I think I remember that too. And uh, with Slugger. You know, Slugger. Slugger, yeah. That's Shaka my Slug. big. Slugger is the connect. If you want to talk about, I know Pistol because Pistol and Slugger are first cousins. I know oh. Fresh. Cause Slugger from out west and out west and out north, they was together. Mm. So I will always know about anything out west, uh, the streets and all that shit. I knew all that from him, and because uh, Pistol was his cousin, I always knew what was going on with the project niggas and all that shit. Yeah, because yeah. of them, you know what yeah. I'm saying. Anything that was popping over there, we was fucking with them. And um, he's the one that that brought out before. Is that transition if you say the eighties and niggas doing that? He was the yep. most consistent OG nigga that was dealing with the whole town. And then he brought that to a fresh album 30 years ago. Ooh. Which to me was the first real trying Nashville trying to get their own sound. Trying to get a sound and, and using the Nashville slang, uh yep. using the best rappers and singers and producers all on one project. He brought that in a classic Fresh album. I feel like everything before that, we was teenagers. I don't even really consider, I was playing around with music. It ain't even okay. nothing that, like, to be honest with you, bro, I like the culture more than I, like, rap. I'm not one of them. I never really, it's the culture of it. It's, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So. I, even us sitting here chipping, it was more important for me, like, um, to learn certain things. But because it's the 80s, because my city Nashville has never been like a hip hop city because sure. we we never had we don't have the black see when you got Chicago Detroit yeah New York urbanists or they you got a, a certain black community that's able to be black hip hoppers right does that make sense yeah. you got all type of different type of black people right so when you got that you can have the streets and the hip hop and they all together okay well here it ain't like that our city nah. is dictated <laughs> if you're a black person. And you do anything that's kind of street, then right. niggas want you to be a thousand percent. Yeah. And the first thing Nashville is about is you gotta have some money, yeah. right? I'm it's proud. a it's a hustler town. It is, right? Regardless, like Memphis, I feel like Memphis, like Nashville niggas is gangster, right? They right. for sure gangster, right? But they getting paper too. Like it's always been together. Like having money and being in the streets has always been some. Remember, yeah. they don't got the neighborhoods. If you niggas, niggas born and raised in, like you said, Bardo, uh, fucking Enchanted Hills, and okay. all this type of shit. Them, them, like I used to think Bardo niggas. I went back and I'm looking. I'm like, these niggas really live on the cliffs of the of the Cumberland River. Mm. These niggas really living off water. 
Nigga, I live off water now. <laughs> Them niggas grew up living off water. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. So I remember being my first time as a little nigga driving over Clarksville Highway mm. and looking under Cumberland and looking at these black people living houses off the river, right? That's crazy. You don't got no shit like that in Memphis. They ain't got that type of shit. Yeah. You feel me? Memphis, yeah. Memphis went through what it went through because the majority of the population was black. So them black places, they create hip-hop because there's enough black people to give them that. Here, it's just not like that. So yeah. the streets is always going to be reflected in, in that. And if you don't give people in Nashville that, they're not really going to fuck with you. Mm. Like on that, they're not there. You from there, but you don't got that mentality. So me, I was smart mm. when I was young. I knew that because I had to... I, this is where I'm from, but I always knew that to be to be if you're gonna be the person here, you're gonna have to give a thousand percent to that, mm. and that just won my my personal course in life. That won my course in life. My course in life was to get on. I didn't need a thousand niggas. I didn't need a hundred niggas. Right. I just needed to be equipped with what my my vision was. Mm. My my and and I had to manifest that. So mm. I for me it was about. With how I'm gonna manifest it. So I, w- I was already by the tenth grade. I was already traveling up top. I was already doing this shit. I was in, I caught a little case. I had to go to the D. Okay. So I sat in the D. So you know I've been dealing with the D since '88, since a kid. Yeah, so D heavy in Nashville. Too. Come on, man, they heavy. Yeah, so they my heavy. my cousin, they he was born here, but he was raised in Detroit. Shout out. And rest well, my cousin and the whole Etter family, Dwayne Etter. Sure. Shout out to Jackpot the Juice. That's my mm. little cousin. Okay. So his roots is from Nashville, just so y'all know. Mm. And his mom and all them from out, from out, uh, from out here. So going up there, it just in, in, in introduced me to like a, a looseness and a playerism that I didn't really get. You know, at that time, rap wasn't communicating like that. You was getting the gangster shit, but you know, in the D. You had to be clean. You had to get a haircut. You had to have your jewelry right. right. You had to have some playerism to you. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But it went, it was, and these is young boys. I'm yeah. seeing young boys. See, we didn't have a lot of teenage millionaires. They was here. If you, I don't know, you remember Pete back in the day? Come on, come on, man. Yeah, man I seen yeah, this nigga yeah. Pete in the 90s in a Lambo. Yeah. Matter of fact, he got bodied in his car. Shout out to little Pete. Yeah. My real Pete's. Yeah. Yeah, they're my people's. Yeah. So, you know, you know seeing all this shit, yeah. seeing all these niggas, seeing a kilo at 16 over at, shout out to White Boy. If y'all know your history, Eric McAnally. McAninley. You know Southside Hustler. Southside Hustler. I wrote Come all on. that. Come on, man. You, you asked Yellow Wolf. Yellow Wolf grew up in Gaston, Alabama. Shout out, okay. I met Yellow Wolf 16 years ago uh, through YG Hootie, who I managed from uh, Westside Paru and uh, right. El Dorado Red. Okay, well, yeah, a lot of y'all yeah, know yeah. from Alabama. Yeah. I know El Dorado Red. He is, but I know El Dorado Red from Harlem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? He's he's Harlem and Alabama at the same time. Mm. And um, I used to work with him. And we got a record. If you want to see some, once again, bro, my, my I give you some links. You look it up. So, it's a uh, it's a record called On Bloods. Mm. You, just, you just look at it. Mm. And you'll see that's put together. My, the first company I really got cracking with. It's called Larceny ENT. I put that mm. together, and we shot that at Enterprise Park. Uh, mm. You got Enterprise in Gonzalez Park in uh, West Side um, Compton. And Hootie brought me over there 20 years ago. And I started shooting videos over there with him in 20, oh, excuse me, 2004. Ooh. So all of them things I'm taking on the road. This the 80s. So when I got with Reagan them, I'm up in. Uh, I was up in Detroit. Okay. And me, I wrote that shit with E Mac Slugger, produced all of it, and. Yeah. Um, I had to take my auntie called me and she like, hey, uh, your friend, some somebody from Nashville called you. I pick up the phone, is he hey, uh, I come down here, Professor Griff. He had just got kicked out of mm. uh, public enemy. Okay. And uh the only person and nobody talks about him. Shout out to Uncle Luke. We're not just talking about Uncle Luke as uh the two live crew, but Uncle Luke was the first independent successful business owner to go gold and platinum in the South. Mm, yeah, for before sure. Before anybody. For sure. Let's just, let's for just sure. talk about Facts. that through that same system I told y'all about Lee Lane. And I told y'all, when you talk about Def Jam, Def Jam only had maybe two years before they signed with Columbia Records. Mm. So a lot of people don't know that. If mm. they were created in 1984, 1986, they signed with Columbia. So LL Cool J first singles 
was independent. His debut album as a teenager was put out on Columbia Records. The Beastie Boys' first album put out Columbia Records. Uncle Luke is going gold off of Two Live Is What We Are Ooh. by itself. Ooh. No help by nobody but them distributors at them one stops and the mom and pop stores. So we really don't know. When they say gold, I say platinum. Okay. Because we really don't know. We don't know because it was no RIAA calculation on what was being sold in right, the mom right, and right, pops. Right. And remember, these is mafia time. It, it's a whole nother. Niggas don't know how gangster the, the business was because the Italian mob ran the music business when I got in the game. And they and they, and they they pocketing and they stomping niggas' toes and whooping their feet and taking money from them. That's the newest thing going back then, right? Hip-hop. That was it. That was it. Yeah. So no, un, just imagine a new form of music come out and we ain't got to register the sales. What you Ooh. think they going to do? So Luke is is whoop, he's down there in Florida yeah. and he's all over the south. And yeah. because he's in the south, guess what? Now he starts going to the Midwest. And now he starts going to the East Coast. Mm. And he been in the West Coast. Just so all y'all most if you are old here and you say the Two Live crew, most people think the Two Live crew is from Miami. They're not. Mm. Just so y'all know, the Two Live crew started in Right outside of L.A. Brother mm. Marquise is from... Marquise. New, Brother Marquise, who... Shout out to him. He recently just passed. Yeah, R.P. Brother, Brother Marquise is from New York, but he had family uh, in Riverside County. It's and crazy. then Mr. Mix, uh, he is from uh, Palmdale. Okay. And he grew up in the same neighborhood that Afro Man did. Mm. So I know Afro Man and Buck had their little thing. Yeah, that's yeah, the eight trays yeah, in the yeah. '60s and all that. Yeah, but uh, that's in Palmdale. And then Fresh Kid Ice is from Trinidad. Ooh, and they all met in the army out in Cali, out in LA. And they had this record. And one part of it said, "Like Luke Skywalker, I got the bass." Uncle Luke, being who he is, he had a club. Now, if you a real Nashville nigga, you get money, Uh-oh. and you was traveling. Back in the day, okay. y'all know about how niggas used to hit them skating rinks. Used to be a skating Ooh, rink. Charlotte. What's that movie they made uh, about the skating rink in Atlanta? The ATL? Yeah, it was a skating rink we used to go to because it's a nigga, it's a black man that went to school up here, Carl Washington. He's from Atlanta. Okay. And Carl Washington was a, a lawyer for a lot of early Nashville acts. Mm. Uh, he was our lawyer. I think he was, uh, he was, uh, what's that boy from out north? Uh, MC Desire. Okay. He consulted with a lot of record labels, but he was from SWATS. And it was um, a skating ring down there. And he bring Nashville artists to Atlanta. So my the first time we all went together, I'm pretty sure Fresh all in went, all us went. And uh we went to that skating ring with Dallas Austin and uh mm. all that skating ring, whatever that skating ring was, I can't it wasn't Cascades or okay. maybe that's what it was. I can't remember. Okay. But um we was a whole bunch of Nashville people going down there. Yeah. And then they had another one called Pac Jam in Miami. If okay. you was getting money, it was called Pac Jam. And Luke, Uncle Luke, ran Pac Jam. Mm. And he would play that record by the Two Live crew. Mm. And he got in contact with them and said, hey, man, y'all are real popular. I want to do a show. He brought them down there for the show. And the crowd went crazy. He's spinning the loose guy. He's like, why don't we make records? Mm. And they made records. Mm. And that is the first two live crew record. That right? shit crazy. So all of this shit, I'm learning. You have to look at the back of albums. I'm oh, sitting yeah. on uh, Gail Lane out south across the street from Severe Park. Okay. And, I'm, and my man Wayne had a crate. And I'm just going through the crate. <laughs> and back in them days, you could look. It was uh, uh, MCADE. They was from Florida, too. They was from South Florida. Uh, it was MC Shadi who was from New York but lived in Atlanta. Mm. He was he was recorded by niggas in South Florida. Uh, it was all type of people, but Luke was the one. And and when he did it, it made all the other people in the South feel like they could do it. And he was doing this once again independently, no help, promotional vans, mm. uh, buying ad time, doing everything he needed to do, and competing. With New York and LA, because LA oh, had McCola Records. I don't okay. know if y'all, it, it, I'm getting y'all some old goal. nigga shit. This no, is this real shit. McCola was uh, that's who put out Ice T first record, mm. uh, Dr. Dre first record, World Class Wrecking Crew. Uh, everything you could think of started Easy E and Jerry Heller 
met at McCullough Records. The only place you could buy McCullough Records, <sighs> records, was at New Life. Mm. And Lee Lane know everything I'm telling y'all about. Shout out to Lee Lane, Shout man. Shout out to Lee. You know what Come I'm saying? Come on, man. That's my man. So you getting all this shit. Uh, and, 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 and Once again, Nashville people just consuming. Okay. But we consuming so much. And then we got these colleges. Okay. So all these college people from different places, guess what? They consuming. Because yeah. rap is new. Yeah. So they, they everybody want to hear it. Every week, something new coming out. Yeah. You you pressing vinyl. Everybody getting some. So it's turning into something. So that first Fresh Fest, you know, you got, I think by the second Fresh Fest, the Blow Pop crew was on it. Well, shout out to Walter D. Walter D. <laughs> Man, I seen Walter D is a South Side legend. For and sure. Walter D was way older than all of us. Walter D is really like a, he was in his mid-20s in the early 80s. Okay. So he came up, uh, you know, he he's a, a probably an early 60s baby. Okay. So, you know, by 80, he may have been 20 years old or some shit. You know okay. what I'm saying? Okay. Uh, so by the time we in the mid-80s as teenagers, he's a grown-ass man in his mid-20s. And once again, not to just, just being real, Mid 80s, all the dope money come in. Oh, yeah. So they on by Black Rick. That's who put the blow pop crew on Rick. If you know mm. anything about Rick, Rick was the man. And if you really know Nashville history, there was a club here called uh, Trax. Trax was the first mega club in Nashville okay. out north on Clarksville Highway, directly across the street from Dodge City, right? And so many people got killed, we didn't call it Trax. We call it the graveyard. Hey. And uh, Rick got killed there in 1988, in December 1988, on our Christmas break. Damn. And Jay Prince has sent a group out here called uh, OG Style okay. or something like that. Not OG Style. Uh, I forgot them niggas' name. But okay. they, they, uh, they came out here. It was a promotional tour. Okay. And he got killed in his bins out there. And I was in Detroit. Rick was my nigga. I'm... Uh, 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 DJ Stanley okay. from the Blow Pop crew introduced me to him. And uh, at that time, at the Fresh Fest, we meeting all of the artists. We Anybody you want to meet, you literally could go up and talk to. So if you wanted to meet him, you could meet him and talk to. And uh, Stanley, Slugger, they became cool friends with DJ Toomp. Mm. Stanley and Toomp, they was like the best DJs scratching then. So Here's the Atlanta the Connections was made. The Miami Connections was made. So this is the mid 80s. Once again, we still don't have no sound. The Shh. nigga starts, you know, the, the dope come into the city. It becomes a different thing. NWA come out. The records get harder. Everybody want to do harder shit. So you got to make a decision. It's also the golden era in New York. You know, you got the bass music in Miami. And even Atlanta is the early Atlanta. Mm. This is... Uh, What's the nigga name? Um, Raheem the Dream. Raheem, yeah, yeah. Uh, MC Tony Rock. Okay. The first Shadi album. Mm. This is all this shit is just happening. So you, all this happening in, in the, the crime wave in Nashville going up. You got the early gangs. The first time I seen the 60s, they was fucking with niggas from Bardo. And mm. then uh, my, shout out to Nene, my family Nene. Okay. Uh, Nene. Uh, that's my, my, my brother Mal. They they were married for many years. That's the okay. mother to my um nephew and my niece. Okay. And uh, my nephews and my niece. And uh, her first cousin came out here. A lot of people don't know that. I don't know if you know this. But CJ Mack, he got a podcast right now mm, with yeah. DMC. He, yeah. he went to Maplewood for a while. Whoa. Just so y'all know. Whoa. So Crippen Cri Cri was out here first, just so y'all know. Whoa. Just so y'all know. Just so y'all know. Ooh. That was just so y'all know in the 80s. Just just so y'all y'all might not even knew that because wow. of just what was going on. Big in fun. and out. Just an in and out thing. Might have caught a little something in and out. Okay. But his family is from Nashville. Just so y'all know. Crazy. Just so y'all know. History, boy. Yeah, just so y'all know. So that's my big cousin, man. He's been very supportive of me through the years. Okay. I do the same thing with him, but um, all these things happening in Nashville. So you you I'm making my decision. I just know what it's going to be. You know, at the same time, <laughs> I'm like, I call my little thing, I go to the D, and um, I'm learning the game from them. And calling the E-Mac record, we, yeah. go to, um, we go to New Orleans. It was a convention called the BRE, okay. the Black Radio Exclusive. Mm. We get down there. Um, 
Luke had got kicked, uh, excuse me, uh, Professor Griff got kicked out of Public Enemy. Mm. Only person that gave him any kind of love and put his album out and gave him an A&R position is Uncle Luke. Mm, wow. So Luke gives him a, a record deal and um, he he's this so-called black radical person. Right. But he loves the Southside Hustler tape. Ah. So he like, who is this white boy? And he called for me and E to go to New Orleans. And we get down there and we meeting uh, Manny Fresh and Gregory D. <laughs> that before it was Cash Money, Manny Fresh was with this nigga name. Look it up, bro. I'm, I'm getting y'all some real <laughs> shit. crazy right here. Uh, it's a, it's a uh, New Orleans OG. His name Gregory D. Okay. And this is, they had a hip hop album. Him and, um, him and uh, Manny. Okay. And I told Manny Fresh this story many I told him this like maybe four years ago okay. in uh in Houston. I was down in Houston. Mm. Me and him at his house. And um he was producing something from OGs from uh Shoreline Mafia. And I got to we got to talk. It was we stayed up all night just talking about shit like how we doing now. Yeah, kicking shit. Two niggas from the South that done put it together in different ways. Right. And um shit, we go down there, needless to say it don't work. And then he get jammed up. He went. He, I remember that. He, he got jammed up with some with some work with yeah. some Mexicans. Yeah. Who was working for the feds? That's how I first learned about federal cases. Mm. We teenagers. E Mac was a teenager, bro. Oh yeah. Going to the feds. So he went to the feds, came out, and you know it took him a while to get back on his feet and do what he did. But he even got bigger than that. But yeah. by that time, I'm like, I'm the fuck up out of here. I. But before I left, he introduced me. What before he went to jail, he introduced me to rugged. Okay. Because that was his player partner in the streets. Right, shout out to Rugged Rob, man. And then Rugged, shit. Rugged was the first real, like, to me, I had never met nobody like Rugged. Rugged was a real street person. Okay. Like, but a smart person. He used to have a game room on Clifton. Mm. Uh, 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 like, not, almost like a, a block in, right behind really that store right there. Okay. And then he, man, we game room, we would go over there. He had the studio put in there. And it was me, Steve L from out east. Steve L. Yeah. yeah. Uh, G Born from out from out south, who was in technique with us. He he was the first producer. Uh, and of course, Slug. Okay. And we put that together and that it did it, it was for the locals. It, it was cool. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It showed rugged that he wanted to get into it. Yeah. So they wanted to make a career out of that. By that time, bro, I'm like 20 years old. I'm like, nigga, I'm not finna do that. No disrespect <laughs> to what you got going on. That's not what I want to do. Okay. So uh, I'm like, I'm finna go to Atlanta. I was early. Mm. So this is 92. Mm. Fuck, I'm gonna go to Atlanta. But before that, these niggas show, E-Mac did that. He went to the feds, introduced me to bro. We wrote the album and then we went to Memphis. So we got to learn Memphis early. Okay. Then we went to Jack the Rapper. I remember that. So Jack the Rapper, we going that. down there with the niggas from out north. They yeah. got their player partners from all different parts of Nashville. We caravanning. Mm. Big, big Benzes. This one you had to buy an AMG kit. You didn't have a, a kit on your car. You had to put the kit. They sending their cars to LA. They sending their cars to Miami. They sending their cars out. Nashville niggas. I'm going to spend a 10 piece just to float that bitch out there. Ooh. Then whatever the automotive shit is on there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we, we down there and we jumping out the cars and we fucking hoes from, you know, different places, New right. York, right. LA, whatever they at. We all just having it. Yeah. And this is 92. At this time, this when Luke first get into it with uh, Death Row. Death Row, yeah, yeah. I seen that shit, bro. Yeah. I seen them niggas Molly Wap. They all went into it. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing Gangstar. Oh, you, do you know Rodney from out east? He was the producer for uh, Organized Crime. Rodney, too. I'm sorry. Shout out to my boy Rodney. Rodney okay. was there. We all there. We young. We the youngest people. And remember, these is... These are certified Nashville drug kingpins. They don't yeah, rap. Yeah. They just out there. Once again, I'm watching that indifference, though. Like, they not trying to be like, whatever they doing, they like, we got it too. If we go somewhere, it was just that thing. They going to Linux. Wherever we go, they having money. They spending it. I'm young, bro. Yeah. I'm just watching this. I never did drugs or nothing. I'm just watching all this. I'm just soaking it up. Yeah, staple. So I'm like, you know what? I need to come down here. Mm. And I'm li my brother had left. Nashville, when he was 17, he went to New York. He got family in New York. He went to okay. New York. Okay. So we always going up. We all we having the contact. Moving around. Yeah, from this. We getting it. But I'm like, I don't want to go to New York. I don't want to put out. I don't. I can always visit New York. And there's niggas in New York 
to this day, because they seen me since, bro, imagine seeing a nigga, I'm, I'm like this, I'm whatever yeah, it is, yeah. I'm there, I'm, bro, I got, ch- I'll show y'all the pictures, all type of shit, yeah. young, yeah. you know what I'm saying, with them niggas, right, and it's like, it just ain't, it's like, man, I don't want to work, a, I'm, I don't want to work a job, if I sell dope, I'm going to have to, I'm knowing at that level what it's going to take, yeah, you're yeah, going to have yeah. to, like, you have to be real big. with yourself, yeah. I, yeah. I, I might have to sit down for a couple yeah. of years, to make it to that, that's not what yeah. I wanted to do. Yeah. So I said, I got to figure it out. What you going to do? I was like, fuck it, I'll go to Atlanta. So right. I go to Atlanta. Um, I'm, I moved to the east side. And the first year we down there, we just getting it together. Then my boy uh, that I went to school with from out south, this nigga, he go crazy. This nigga really go crazy trying to shoot niggas in Atlanta, all this stupid <laughs> shit. So they come back and they call the charge. Okay. Uh, but he doing good. Shout out to uh, Christian Bokemia. Shout out if you uh, uh, OG from Mount Savia. Yeah, I remember when Bo and and uh, uh, Ron, that's my boy. They all went to okay. school with me. Okay. They came up here and caught a robbery. I think in Columbia, Franklin, mm. high speed chases. They hit like Ooh. four or five banks in a day. Ooh. And then they sat down. And um, that second year, I said, "Well, I gotta get it together." So some shit that came through. Um, I brought one of my Antioch. I brought my girlfriend at the time down from Antioch. She started doing hair. We just run in our place. She like, hey, I got some money coming. She gave it to me. She actually moved back to Nashville, gave me mm. that money. I got a um a pound of pee, a pee of um work, and right. I worked it. So now I'm sitting out uh, on Northside Drive. You know where the Mercedes Benz, <laughs> I mean the Mercedes Arena in Atlanta is. Yeah. Um, Morris Brown, they have a tower right there, and they used okay. to have uh college um what is that like a college uh, residency. Okay. So I'm just sitting there. Me and this nigga from New York, my nigga Black Jesus, and we just we just knocking sacks all day. <laughs> I went into my nigga Chase, or y'all know Chase Johnson, one of the greatest A and R. Shout out to my brother Chase. Mm. Chase was out there. The whole L A crew was out there. My nigga Tariq was out there. Uh, you know, we just I'm meeting them. I link up with some niggas from Grady Homes. It's just no more. But that was the projects that was you know if you know Atlanta, you know when you come in. Um, you come into the city and you see the Grady Hospital. Okay. It used to be projects on the other side of that. If you old, you remember the projects. That was his projects. They was called Grady Homes. Me and Ooh. this nigga linked up in 94. It's and then crazy. everything happened. I just started meeting niggas. I'm selling weed. And it just started. And, the move, and, then, and, and moving. And then I'm down there with my nigga Ghetto from up here. Okay. Uh, he, from out, he from out south, but he grew up out east for a while. And then he came back out south. Uh, Doze, that was the only white dude around us. Doze, since all of them, they know Doze. Doze okay. out here now, he went to Hollywood, picked up skill. He worked with all the movies in Nashville. Mm. Shout out to Doze, that's my brother right now. Uh, my nigga Divine uh, from from New York. He was the only Divine, yeah, yeah, he was yeah, the only yeah, New York person yeah. that was with us that became family and actually yeah. moved to Nashville yeah. for a while. And then he moved out to L.A. Then I brought him out to L.A. But we all was down in um, Atlanta getting to it. And then... It's moving slow. It's not moving as fast as it was. So now you go from selling weed, you might start robbing niggas in the projects. I'm doing all type of shit I wasn't even doing in Nashville. Okay. So now I'm I'm, I'm catching cases because it's Atlanta. Mm. It's a different. I never caught cases and I caught one gun case and beat it. Now I'm catching cases back to back. Mm. I'm like, yeah, this is not it because Atlanta is a tricky. It's tricky. You know what I'm saying? It's tricky. It's different. It's people from all over. Yeah, yeah. It's just yeah. A, it's a different vibe. So, yeah. on the third case, my big brother Mal. If anybody that's old, once again, if you're an old school person, you know my brother Mal used to work at Sam's downtown. Mm. My big brother Mal. So yeah, Mal yeah. was like he had Sam, met baby. he had met um Bobby Johnson. Bobby Johnson is one of the original rap dudes. He moved to Nashville in the '90s. He owned a label called Enjoy. They okay. put out Treacherous 3, Spoony G, mm. all these niggas. So when Dr. Dre, uh, Hutch from Above the Law, Hutch. when all these niggas would come to New York, they would go to his record store. Okay. Mal and him get cool. And Mal like, yeah, my brother in the music, he like, cool. Yeah. Send me some shit. He sent him a demo. He said, I like this. I'm going to send this to somebody I know. Okay. Little did we know that somebody he knew was Dr. Dre. So we in Atlanta, we get the news, we like, once again, bro, ain't no internet. Right, right, Ain't right. no smartphones. Word of mouth. Yeah, so niggas say, yo, that, all right, that's all niggas need to really be like, we gonna shift the position. Ooh. 
Oof. We always wanted to go to LA anyway. Fuck it, let's shift the position. Mm. So now we are going, we going there. I'll tell this to DeMarco. DeMarco and my cousin, Thea, they best friends. Okay. He like, shit, I got to play for y'all. I get y'all out there. He pull the jug, we out there. This yeah. the end of 95. So I almost Ooh. been in LA for 30 years. My my adult life, I've been in LA. You feel me? Whole time. Man, oh, thugging it out. That's my home base. I always okay. I, back and forth because I'm young. I'm in my in my early to mid 20s. I'm like, nigga, I'm finna come back and forth. I'm, I'm gonna tell y'all some real shit just so everybody know you you a nigga from out south. So that's 95. 90, I get out there. That's uh what what is that? Uh Tupac. What you call it ain't out yet. All eyes on me ain't out. Go to rim soundtrack shit. Uh, not, he shit. came back in October. He was he was back two months before we got out there. Okay. Right. So this is leading into all eyes on me. Mm. So me and Thea from Antioch. If you if you went to Thea went to Overton and he okay. went to uh what's that shit my mom and then went to Cameron. Okay. He went to Cameron Middle School. So we all out, we go, and this the old death row office. You know, you seen the movies where they be whooping niggas' asses yeah, yeah, and all yeah, this yeah, type yeah, of shit. Yeah. So we get out there, we don't got nothing but like some little whoop wins because right. his cousin is out there. Okay. His cousin is, he from Tennessee, he not even from Nashville. His daddy from uh, West Tennessee, one of them little small towns, I can't even think of it. So he out there, he like, man, if y'all need some, it's like a little bullshit, like 22. 25, some little shit just to get a nigga up off of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, we go out there. We got braids and all type of shit and fatigues and all type of shit. And <laughs> they know we not from out there. We not yeah. stupid. And plus, like I said, bro, I done been in New York, Detroit, all type of shit. I know I'm not finna come out here and just be like, what's up with this nigga? Cause yeah, yeah, this yeah, nigga yeah, blood. Yeah, I'm not yeah. finna talk to this, these niggas like that. I'm in L.A., man. Yeah. So we go to the office. I'm like, yo, I'm here to see Dr. Dre. I start saying names. The receptionist is like, what? As soon as I say Dre, she like, what? Is I'm is we right here, a nigga come down the thing. A crip nigga, he from uh 20s, Long Beach. Okay. He look at us, he see us, he like, hey, come here, come here, come here. We like, what? He like, yeah, come up here. He like, I know y'all ain't from he just looked at us. <laughs> he knew cause Dr. Dre was fucking with Sam Sneed. Sneed. He was fucking with all kind of East Coast. There's niggas from out of town. Yeah, yeah. That was Dre thing. Yeah. So he knew we went. We ain't had nothing to do with it. He took us upstairs. We went to the roof. I was smoking cigarettes then, smoking weed. Like, man, we smoking. He like, bro, I'm so glad them niggas ain't up here. So mm. them niggas would have whooped your ass. He said, where you from? I'm like, oh, well, you know, we from, uh, we from, we coming from Atlanta. I'm like, we from Tennessee. Mm. He like, yeah, y'all niggas like, y'all from New York. I'm like, yeah, we fuck with all that type of shit too. He said, look, I'm going to tell you something, bro. Mm. Warren G. Because I've been fucking with Islam my whole life. Okay. He said, you, you militant? I said, yeah, I'm militant. He said, um, he said, um, I'm going to hook you up with Warren G. Warren G, uncle, his name was Ron G. Ron G is the, he was the militant force behind Dad, Snoop, Ooh. anything that had something to do with just being right and exact, standing straight. He didn't do no drugs. He was in the Marines. He okay. was a Muslim. He was, he was, he was on top of his shit. Mm. So he plugged me with him and, um, shit, he plugged me with these the Warren G had this group called the Twins. The Twins, yeah, for sure. And he played yeah. with the Twins, the Five Footers. They five had footers. another group. And if yeah. you ask LA niggas, they had a, they was called the Dove Shack. Dove Shack, for and, sure. Uh, Dove this Shack. is all on. Um, he had a label. I, I don't know if it was Regulate the Label or G Funk Child or some a G Funk. Sure like yeah. But he had a label, and I got with him, and then he introduced me to a producer, uh, and the producer. Yeah. Uh, his name was Massive. Okay. And he was producing for this girl I met in Atlanta that, that was that uh was from L.A. Okay. And I met her, and she said, "Hey, if you ever come to L.A.?" And it just so happened we out there, and she put me and put me into the underground of L.A., which at that time was a uh, is a place called um they they got documentaries called Project Blow, but they had just moved. To uh, what's that shit? Um, it's called a K. I can't even. It's this big underground shit. Hold it right there. Hold it right there. We're gonna we're gonna go to commercial break, man. We are coming right back, man. With T K Barry, man. Hey, this real deal history, nigga. Stay tuned. I'll think. Oh, that might be 